All right, we're just getting going. Yep. If you're watching, YouTube's up. Facebook is up. Yep. YouTube's up. Facebook. We're just like getting Instagram around. going. Your patience. Go ahead and uh, join up and start it here in a second. Come on, Instagram. I'm chugging. Taking its sweet time this morning. It's like Monday. More or less on time. Yeah, yeah. We're watching us. Instagram uh, should be coming up. <laughs> Our uh, 26th uh, episode or live feed. All right. Should be good. Should be good with All everything. Right. Yep. Welcome, Instagram. Um, oh, thank you. Um, we, uh, hey, you know, this is a, a Q&A session, as always, so feel free to ask any questions you'd like. Um, anything 034 related, anything automotive related. Last, uh, last few episodes, we've been able to uh, break the internet with uh, some comments about uh, different products and concepts. <laughs> Last week, um, I talked, uh, some, someone asked about intakes, and, and so I, I explored the topic of air filter size and routing. And uh, from what I heard, it, it sparked a lot of a conversation and debate, which is great. Um, that's not something I, I've really seen people talking about before. There's definitely been this idea that bigger is better when it comes to air filters with, without any regard to where the air filter resides um, and so that's something that we always take into account here when we're engineering our intakes and uh, you know why we don't always use the air filter because uh, there's a there's an envelope restriction but i know some of the other uh companies out there got uh, offended <laughs> um i heard something that brian saxton pretty upset about something uh about about the discussion we had uh, listen, I, I've actually never seen a unitronic intake. Um, I can't comment on it, and I was pretty clear that I did not, um, you know, I was not presenting any data about one intake versus another. In no, fact, it was all very general discussion. Yeah, in fact, I criticized our closed intake. So if you're a tuner out there and you have a closed intake and you got offended, well, just, you know, take solace knowing that I criticized our own closed intake too. If you can somehow make a closed intake with a massive air filter and make it flow great, then, you know. Or flow any better. Or yeah, or flow better. Than a, than a um, but it could even filter. flow worse, you know. But regardless, if you can do that, more power to you. Um, I know Integrated Engineering got upset too. And, um, you know, again, uh, I, I, I didn't say anything about anyone's intake. But uh, I do think generally this is something that customers should be thinking about when they're evaluating choosing intakes. I think for people to go out and evaluate an intake on one, one limited variable, it's not what's best for the market. It's not what's best for customers. So you know, customers need to need to ask these questions, and we're not afraid to have customers do that. So, um, you know, we we just picked up a, a Superflow flow bench, the biggest one they make, and uh, we're going to be doing. Uh, we we traditionally sent our intakes out to be flowed, and we've gathered data like that, but. Uh, and we, we use other methods too, other than static flow, but um, we're getting that set up. And so hopefully in the next month or two, we'll be able to do some flow tests. Um, and we will, you know, I don't know if we'll, what we'll publish, but I'd like to, you know. Yeah, I mean, well, there's, there's so much, yeah, there's so much testing that goes behind, goes on <laughs> behind the scenes before we get to our final product. Yeah, so. but I'd, I'd like to, to compare, you know, our, our um, you know, the reality about air filter shrouding, I'd like to actually. Right. demonstrate that and i think we can um you know we can effectively show that there that is an issue certainly the, the air air box itself can block so yep. block the filter so um yeah so go ahead and ask your questions we'll we'll, we'll get them uh we'll get them in I, I see there's some coming and we have some left over from past weeks too so um uh, someone's asking apr or zero three four tune for my golf r mark seven 
Well, I mean, you're, you're coming to an extremely biased source. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, of course, you know, we're, we're going to lean one way for, um, you know, we're going to we're going to say it for all the reasons we've stated before. Um, and I think we even have uh, clipped this out. So uh, Sean or Nick, if you want to just link that clip to uh, this this uh, person who's asking this question. But our, our our tuning philosophy is always to make the most power safely using the same um, you know, quality of tuning calibration, the same safety features and functionality as the factory tune. Our goal is always to offer factory quality calibration with, with no compromises or workarounds or, um, you know, jerry rigs, or whatever, yep. um, like a lot of tuners do to force the map sensor into range or, or to force a lot of the, the safety features. You know, the ECU, is, is monitoring every running variable of the engine. And, and those variables all have to fall within certain ranges to be deemed safe or plausible. And um, you know, if you can't go in there and open those ranges up or change them to what they should be, sometimes you can dumb those down or trick the ECU. And you know, we, we strictly don't do that. We don't believe in doing that. So our, our, you know, that's our commitment with all our tunes. There's a 30 day, satisfaction guarantee you can you can try our tunes out and um i think i think our our results speak for themselves as yeah. far as the speed and power that our customers make as well as the reliability uh and the lack of engine failures and things like that that are out there so feel free to hit us up too if you want to chat more <clears throat> uh loud crackles are the topic for debate please what's that mean <laughs> Oh, okay. So just just a topic change on the crackle. Hmm. For debate. Yeah, yeah. There's 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 uh you know feel free to link uh, some of the the uh, crackles uh, debate uh, conversations. Um. But uh, yeah, no. I mean, I, th I think we've settled on. on I, think, I, think, I think we're in a good, pretty yeah. good spot with the I latest. We've, we've optimized the uh, the crackle uh, feature. In fact, one one gentleman who was on the live chat like three live chats ago was pretty vocal and adamant that um, our, our crackles were messed up or not good or whatever, not whatever criteria is used to, to evaluate crackles. And, and he actually updated to our newest version and said they were perfect. So, um, you know, we recommend you just go to our latest version and, 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 and uh, check the crackles for yourself. But um, let's see. Um, with the importation of more and more Audis from the 90s coming from Germany, will your product line change with that? Um, not likely. The number of 90s Audis coming to the U.S. is very, very small. Uh, We're talking like a dozen cars. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Five RS2s a year does not uh, market constitute. Uh, and we already have a pretty complete product line for an RS2. Yep. Uh, so, um, you know, that's just not enough. Uh, to make a big difference if there were thousands of cars a year showing up in the u.s that that would certainly change things well and but... so many of those when they come across are are kind of a collector item um the modifier right. is not mm -hmm. necessarily the um, top priority on that and we do have some <laughs> nla product we we try and keep up with but top it's though, really you know, small you, there's some you know like ball joints are all getting discontinued and yeah. for us to go out and make a ball joint we have to make like a thousand or 5,000 ball joints and how many, you know, how many ball joints, are, you know, is really some, someone going to buy. So if we end up selling a hundred of those ball joints a year, that's like a 50 year supply of ball joints, you know? Right. Uh, so it's not a good financial investment for us. And uh, the other thing we could do is just charge a lot more so we can make our money back, but the, you know, that's not a great option there. So when, when we think there's a high enough volume on LA, NLA stuff, we do it. But uh, yeah, I think, I think what, what's exciting for a company with, with our skills and resources is, you know, the market coming out where there will be 20,000 cars a year sold. That's exciting. for us. That means we can, we can produce a part. We can make a thousand of them and maybe we'll sell 5,000 a year. So now we're reordering that part two, three times a year. It's moving through our inventory. 
were making money on it. That that's how a company like Zero Three Four Motorsport or an APR or any of the bigger, more well known tuners, they our businesses thrive on turning parts, selling parts, that activity. Is your crackle tune safe for OEM exhausts? No aftermarket test pipe. <clears throat> yeah. Um, yeah, we don't, we, it depends on the setup. We don't, we, we've kind of moved away from that on the B8S4. Um, so all of the crackle files come along with the test pipe file now. Um, it's kind of one or the other, well, so we're not. Yeah, I mean, generally, I'd say crackles are most safe with, uh, with a test pipe or something. Generally speaking, dumping raw fuel into a Cali converter is not good for it. Um, so, uh, but as far as the exhaust system, it's, it's safe. I think at some point, every exhaust, every muffler fails. So the crackles could accelerate that. Yeah, it's but, obviously more stress. You've got but a, it's, a higher pressure pulse coming down. You know, maybe instead of lasting 20 years, 15 years. I mean, I remember when I was a kid, like, every exhaust were consumable items. Yeah, on blowing cars. out an exhaust was a pretty normal <laughs> thing, especially I, depending on your, your yeah, uh, climate. But I grew up in Minnesota, and it's like, Every time you drove somewhere, some exhaust is dragging on a car and, and flying off. You just don't see that in California. Exhausts have gotten much better quality over the years. They're and real the, stainless steel. The, the, the other reason we moved away from doing it on the, the stock catted BS4s is, is you just, they're so muffled. Um, those yeah. cats remove like 90% of the effect, so it wasn't really worth you it. You just don't hear it. Some of the other cars, like the MQBs, those, those actually have factory provisions for that, um, you know, for that sound and the, the those cats in that setup, it's a much less restricted sound, so get a little more out of those. Uh, someone's asking, are you guys going to come out with a, an uh, air intake for the B8.5S4? Uh, absolutely. Uh, we've been talking about this almost every week. Uh, we have a, our, what we call our X34 intake coming for the B8 and B8.5S4. Uh, we'll have two versions. One will accommodate the stock throttle body and another uh, is for our upcoming upgraded. What is it? The new throttle body? 80, yeah. 84? 84 millimeter throttle body. So th there will be two different hoses. The intake shroud is basically the same. Uh, we're very excited to be able to bring this product to market at a very competitive price. Um, what we plan to offer is the, the highest quality intake for the price or the money on the market. Uh, there are there are other intakes that sell at this price that are I would throw in the trash, and uh, there's some others that are good but or, or nice, but they're a lot more expensive. So um, this this uh, air filter system won't uh, rub through any of your fuel lines. It will be the air filter will be secure. Uh, things won't wobble and bounce around loosely, and it and it'll be made carbon fiber and beautiful to look at and. Everything will be as functional as, as it can be or needs to be for the price point. Yep. Um, as far as when we're going to have it out, I think trying to get it out in the next month or so. Yep. Um, but um, the, the development engineering is done, and at this point we're just waiting on, I think, one of the components, the, the, the yep. carbon fiber crowds uh, to start showing up. And do, we, do you have an ETA on that, Nick? The yeah, no, we, take. yeah, so mid to late November, uh, hopefully. So, but yeah, if, if you need an intake, please hang in there a little longer. It's, it's really nice. We've, we've showed it in, in some of the other episodes. We, so. uh, someone's asking, would you guys come, would you guys be come out with a TCU tune for the C7A6 ZF8 SQ5 trans? Uh, yeah, we'll be we'll, we'll be updating that. It's still um, you know still very much a beta file. Um, we do have a beta right. Now. We we do have betas up on the server currently. Um, if you'd like to doing, buy our beta, it's yeah, it's a very, very reduced cheap. price. Um, yeah. But yeah, we will be putting more effort into that in the very near future. Mm -hmm. um, and we're going to be putting more and more work into that and trying to add more. Of, yeah. Um, to that tune, but. Uh, if you, if you, if you buy it at the beta price, you'll get all the updates in the future at no cost. So if you want to get into it now, it's a good time to do it. Yep. The, the price will at least more than double from what we're currently currently selling it for. Um, 
How long does it take to get set up with the data logger program? Uh, depends on workload. I'm actually also in the middle of doing a huge update on the data logger, um, make it easier and faster to roll out into the future. Um, so there's, there's kind of a queue of uh, backlogged registration needs. So um, normally it's a, a day or two, um, a little longer right now. We'll get you updated. Just email tuning at 034 motor score. Yeah. If anyone's interested. I think I've got about 14 in the queue. 14 requests? Yeah. Cool. Um, I mean, is that, is this, these logging tools that, that we give to our customers, that's common in the industry? Like, no, not, 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 you not, want, you want not all that common. There's, I mean, I think there's, there's a couple cool. out there you can, you know, Similar tools you can you can use, but um, I think we're the one of the most widely used uh, logging options that we offer. And we, we we put together a whole data logging suite. It's actually the same software I use for for calibrating here. So it's all of our info, all of the all of the data you could you uh, you could wish for. Yeah, uh, at your fingertips. So we're not uh, not in the practice of hiding anything. So it's your car. You can do what it's doing, and you know, it helps us if you've got any issues. We can capture some quick data yeah. and take a look at things. I mean, I, I remember there was another tuner that, that we dealt with in the past who had a logger, then it, it generated so much, so many questions and concerns about their tunes that they actually stopped offering it yeah. and, and locked it down. Um, and so, you know, I think not only are we a, a tuner that gives the customers these tools, we... Uh, open ourselves up to the additional criticism or questions yep. or nitpicking yep. of the files. But we're, we're okay with that because one, it, it means our customers could potentially be happier. And two, uh, we do learn from, you know, say a lot of it, we, we just have to respond and say, that's normal. That's not an issue. That's, that's a, within the normal range. There's yep. no, there's no benefit to, to continue to tweak this. It's already optimized, but uh, there are times when, when we do learn too. Sometimes, yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. So, we're, and and you know, like I said, we're not we're not in the business, as you can see from all these talks. We're not in the business yeah. of hiding anything. We're uh, we're very open with our with our performance and our data metrics, and you know, try and make it as as real and available to you guys as we can. Mm -hmm. So, um, yes, a, a, another thing to keep in mind when you're considering what tuner to, to use. So yeah, and I, and you know, <laughs> further on that, a lot of I know there's a number of other tuners that. Can and have set up you set up people on data loggers and have requested that they don't get shared and you can't share your logs and you can't. We've never once made that request. Yeah. So we're we're proud of our calibrations, how they work, what they do, um, and yeah, that's all we can say about that. I guess that's right. Yeah. Um, is there a tutorial for uploading your files to the car and how long does it take to flash? Yeah. So this is um, <clears throat> when you get your your. Um, Flashing information, there's actually a uh, document that comes along with it that kind of walks you through the process of, of what flashing the car looks like. How long it takes to flash really depends on the car and what you're flashing. Some, some ECUs are, are in the 10 to 15 minute range the first time. Um, ECUs are usually a little bit quicker, uh, one to two minutes, just less data being covered. Mm -hmm. But it really depends on the application and what you're, what you're flashing. If you want more specifics or a little more info, um, we are going to be putting together some more videos on that. There's, yeah, there's a quick walkthrough in the, in the user guide. Yeah, we'll, we'll be having Nick do something. Uh, someone is asking, updates on the surge tank for the RS3 slash TTRS. Um, yeah, so this, this, uh, this product hasn't progressed like we wanted. We, we actually talked about this product extensively right in the beginning of, you know, our probably episode one or two, we talked about it extensively. Mm -hmm. um, we got a little distracted um, by a request to use, use some different pump options and to also move the surge tank to different locations. The, the biggest issue that came out is that um, the spot that, that we started with, which is right under the master cylinder brake assist unit, uh, is, is where Cybex ECUs are being installed. So we, we wanted to, to be able to offer this product for people that were running Cyvex as well. And so we, we spent like a month or two messing with different locations only to realize that, that that was kind of a dead end and that wasn't going. So 
Um, we we are continuing to to work on it. Um, we've we've made a lot of progress in, in the last few weeks, and engineering is has a major focus on working on the finish of development. And uh, we we have some some part samples, and we're manufacturing these really nice uh, banjo hard lines to go off the top of the surge tank. So it's very professional, very functional. Um, and we will offer two versions with the Deechworks direct drive pump. Yeah, the, their brushless offering. Their brushless yep. pump. And we will also be offering um, a configuration for the, uh, the, the Veyron E5LM pump, which uh, a lot of the, the big turbo people are running. So our surge tank will accommodate either pump. Um, we may not necessarily be offering the pump because chances are you already have the pump in your tank. So what you would do is you would reinstall a factory fuel pump in your tank and then put the you know the E5LM pump in the surge tank up the front. Um, if you have Cyvex, I don't know, it's, it's not going to be a good option. I think there's a limited number of cars with Cyvex out there. Really what this, this product will work well for is uh, anyone who's doing road course driving, it's, it's a necessity. You literally can't drive the car at speed with anything less than about a full tank. It's, it's ridiculous, it's, it's yeah. I mean, shockingly we, bad. We, yeah. And, and it's, uh, part of it's the result of, you know, S3s do it too, but S3s just aren't as fast. And they're they not consuming nearly, yeah, they have nearly. And they don't have the same fuel. Far anymore. less fuel. Right. right. Yeah. So. Um, you basically need this pro this product if you want to turn it all, and if you're drag racing, you also need it too because all the the fuel in the tank just goes up against the back of the tank, and you you, you lose um, you know the, the fuel pump pick the factory fuel pump pickup uh, is no longer submerged. Yep. So a lot of these guys going fast in the quarter mile have modified their their in tank fuel pump setup, yep. often putting a pickup going back to the back of the tank, so when the fuel washes back there, uh, and also running full tanks, which isn't ideal for fast times. So right. we don't have an, a release date, but we are working on it. It will be a, a very nice, very flushed out solution. Uh, all the lines will fit perfectly, um, and everything will be very professionally manufactured. So it, it's, it's a top priority for us to get that product yep. out. So. Unfortunately, since we've been talking about it, a bunch of other people have jumped on the bandwagon to do it as well. Um, so that's a, a part of the issue with showing your hand. It, it opens you up to that as well. Uh, follow questions, surge tank on the B8, B8.5. Yes, um, as you may have heard, um, uh, Matt, Matt Tremblay, Matt Tremblay was running a prototype kit. So we, we sent him our surge tank. He uh, very craftily um, yeah. basically <laughs> got in, it hooked in up half a day. Got it in like half a day. Up and up. The guy is very capable. Mm -hmm. And Matt, if you ever are looking for a job, uh, right? Yeah, you want to move down here? Probably don't. But uh, hit us up. Um, anyways, uh, that the the world record BA time is currently on our tune with our surge tank. And um, and that, yeah, that did again same situation. It let him drop down to like a quarter tank. Yeah, uh, you don't have to run and, a full tank anywhere. You get your weight down. And and for road racing, it's it's an ideal setup too. So if, if you don't if you don't um, understand what the benefit of the fuel surge tank is, Nick, we should probably clip out some of the the stuff from the from. Yeah, I don't know if we have earlier. those pulled out yet. No, I don't think, think we do. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but uh, ba basically, in your tank, you have fuel sloshing around. And you have a fuel pump that's in the middle. And so when you, when you generate 1G of force, the, the fuel in your tank is now at 45 degrees, which means there's 1G going down and there's 1G going sideways. Normally you just have 1G going down. It's an infinite downward you know, direction of 1G. And so the fuel is level. But if you go to 1.5 Gs, you know, which is pretty hard to do. Yeah, but it's sustained, especially. Yeah. You know, in an in a eight-second quarter mile car, you could get you know, two Gs. Yep. And so you're now at I don't know exactly. You're like at seventy degrees or whatever. And and there's enough, um, you know, lateral force that 
the fuel pump is now unsubmerged. There's just air going into the um, and And so your engine can't run if there's no fuel pressure. And so you, you get something that resembles a misfire or a cutout. It's very disruptive. You're on track. It's yeah, the fuel, kind of dangerous. The fuel helps a lot to make things go. Yeah. If, if you're mid-corner, fully loaded up at the limit of traction, the last thing you want is to lose the, the power going to the wheel. Uh, to the tires so um what our what our kit does is it 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 puts a surge tank in your engine compartment with a very high flow fuel pump in there and your in tank pump now just becomes the pump that fills the surge tank the surge tank is not pressurized but it's always full of fuel and so if you're in a corner and and your fuel sloshes around and your factory pickup it's it's exposed that just means you pump a little air up to the surge tank, but the surge tank is still full of fuel. And that air ultimately gets pushed back through the return line back into the tank, and it doesn't cause any harm. So you can literally run the surge tank till your tank is empty, and then you'll have whatever fuel is left in the surge tank that will get used. That's the only way you can ever get starvation. So it completely eliminates any possible starvation issue. A lot of race cars use this this concept, we didn't invent it, but uh, we're very excited to bring it out to various models. And unfortunately, Audis all have a pretty some degree of issue with it. Yep. <clears throat> Any plans to stock partner with Alcon brakes or parts? Uh, no, not specifically with Alcon. Um, we are we are working with with a reputable manufacturer that does uh, produce what we believe are brake rotors. Uh, that that are on par with Alcon quality, and so this is a new kit that that we're releasing this week, and this is a rear brake upgrade for the uh, Golf R and S3, and TTRS RS3 and GTI with with the performance pack, and so this this upgrades the rear disc diameter by what twenty three ten to three fifty, so. Um, 40 millimeter upgrade, which is substantial. And then we also supply a new uh, caliper carrier. So you keep your stock caliper. It just moves, we just move the caliper out further. Uh, and that goes on here. So these are, these are high quality vented rotors. Um, they're vented directionally and they're the correct direction for left and right, unlike the factory rotors. Um, in, in many cases, the, the Factory cast rotors don't have directional veins. They have straight veins uh, for the most part, I'm generalizing, but most of them have straight veins. The directional veins are superior for creating airflow. So the, the, there's these hollow spaces inside the rotor, which you can kind of see on the edges, and they're on the inside too. And they basically turn into a fan as the rotor sp spins. And so the rotor pulls cool air from the inside and throws it to the outside. What happens is as the air flows through the inside of the rotor, uh, heat is transferred through conduction and through radiance uh, means, and that heat escapes out of the rotor. Uh, and this is critical for controlling rotor temps. Without these kind of vents, uh, heat just gets trapped inside the rotor and it has nowhere to go. So think of these as, as essentially heat sinks that pump their own air. And because the rotor is spinning, uh, you can actually do that. So one issue with the DAZA and, and the, the DAZA platforms like the 8S TTRS and the 8V.5 RS3 is they have the same rotor left and right. It actually goes all the way back through the 8J. Yeah, and the 8J. Basically the all the RS cars. And RS6 before that, going back to the C5 RS6, um, R8s have the same issue? I believe so, I yeah. I think so, yeah. Um, but, but for sure, the, the 8S and the 8V.5. And so the, the one, one side uh, rotor cools properly. The other side, it's pulling air from the outside and, and pushing it in, and the air has nowhere to go. And so you always see overheating of, I believe it's the passenger right side rotor. So our rotor kits um, you know, fix that issue, create the proper airflow from left and right, and then we have these upgrade rear kits too. We have upgraded rear rotors coming for the uh, RS3, um, and we are working on TTRS rotors as well. So, cool. All right. Um, 
And you can read about these on our website. We will be releasing these at what? The, uh, we did release these. Yeah. Yeah. They're on our website now, so if you want to go look at them, we will be releasing the product release information like tonight or tomorrow. Uh, what is the benefit of increasing the diameter of the rear rotors with the same size caliper pad? Will it improve brake bias? Well, the, the benefit of, um, th there's always a benefit to increasing rotor diameter from a braking force standpoint. So what happens is uh, a caliper clamps onto the rotor ring surface. The further out that surface is, the more leverage that caliper has over the moments, uh, you know, where, where the rotor is spinning in the center. Imagine if you move that caliper down, there's so little leverage there that the amount of force to stop this from spinning would be very high. Now imagine if you went out here, you, you would require very little force. So it's the same as using a breaker bar when you're trying to loosen a bolt. Um, the, the other benefit is a bigger rotor can have more thermal mass. It can have uh, more pad area. Now in this case, we're not changing the pad area because we're, we're not changing the caliper. But when you see brake kits that have bigger rotors with bigger calipers, that means there can be more pad area. So you have uh, more friction per, per unit of area, as well as more thermal capacity because the parts are bigger. Um, but in this case, we are uh, increasing the diameter. Um, brake bias on these ABS cars is um, somewhat moot because the second you lock something up, the ABS on these cars works so well. Um, it, you're really not trying to optimize brake bias like you used to um, in the old days before ABS or when ABS was really crappy. I remember when ABS first came out, the whole trick was to optimize the bias so that both front and rear were at the, the, the threshold of friction right before ABS engaged. Because when ABS would engage, it would be so abrupt. You, you, you wanted to threshold brake right up to the point of ABS. But nowadays, you just put your foot to the floor as hard as you can, and ABS has worked so well that uh, the bias isn't as much of a concern. So we're, we're more concerned with adding uh, braking force and then thermal mass, and gotta admit, it looks freaking cool. There's a, and you can also play with the bias on the larger rotor um, with different pad compounds if you're, yeah. if you're at that level. There's, there's a number of ways. It basically gives you more, um, a bigger toolkit to work with, essentially. Um, so you can adjust those those forces based on pad, and you know you're going to have reduced thermal mass because you've got less effort on the rotor ring and a bigger swept area. There's there's a lot more you can do with a bigger rotor than you can with a small one. Someone's asking about the weight difference. Great question. We we <clears throat> post all those specs on our website on the product pages, <clears throat> but these are 14 pounds, and the the factory are 15. So a bigger rotor with with one pound less weight. On the front rotors, we're seeing up to a five pound it's savings. Pretty huge, it's, yeah. That's that is a lot, guys. And that's not only unsprung weight; it's rotational, so that's less um, weight that your engine has to spin and overcome. So, <laughs> imagine an exercise bike at five pounds. That front flywheel, you feel it as your pedal. Yeah, every time you got to spin it up and down. Yep. Yeah. Every piston, you know cycle is having to spin that heavier rotor. And not only is it lighter, it works better. Yep. <clears throat> um, how effective is the TTRS HJ catch can? I've heard that it's not worth the money to install it with the CEPB engine. Well, I mean, do you need, <clears throat> do you need one is the initial question. Yeah, so what, what, what we did is, is we, um, there, there is fr from the, the top of the valve cover, there's the outlet of the crankcase. And normally that goes right into the turbo inlet. So what we did is we rerouted that to the catch can first and it goes back to the in inlet. So any uh, liquid oil or oil fumes or anything go through our catch can first before going to the turbo inlet. There, there is another spot where um, uh, typically any factory car you'll see through the, the crankcase breather system, there's always a connection to the intake manifold, and that, and that allows the engine to put vacuum on the crankcase. Typically, you always want the crankcase under vacuum 
if you can't get vacuum, then having zero, zero pressure or atmosphere inside the crankcase is optimal. The last thing you want is pressure. You don't want to have a pressurized crankcase at all. But um, if, you can, if you can put a connection to the intake manifold, then you can um, put some vacuum on the crankcase. And it also gives an opportunity to, to burn those crankcase fumes through the engine, through the combustion process of the engine. Uh, for, from a mission stamp. There is still a possibility of oil going from there um, into the engine. So our catch can doesn't address that one point. Uh, if you really wanted to, you could, you could intercept that and send that to our catch can first and try to do something there. Um, it would really require a second catch can to go in that spot. So I believe any criticism you've heard is probably relating to that. But our catch can does work in the sense that it captures any of the oil coming directly out of the crankcase, which we believe is, is the bulk of the issue. So, um, yeah, I mean, it, it does what it does. We don't advertise that it, it does anything beyond that. Um, happy to talk openly about it like I just did. <clears throat> um, when will the turbo inlet be released for the B9S4S5? Um, we're just waiting. Uh, for the, the product to show up from the manufacturer. So all the engineering is done and we will release it as soon as we can. I don't have, I yeah, think I don't it have was a good like, ETA. No, we still have first article. I think it's, yeah. it's, yeah, I don't have a good ETA, so. But we're working on it. Um, recommend waiting, it'll be a really nice one. And uh, we plan on doing some flow numbers on that yep. too, so we can. Uh, will flashing software ever be optimized for Mac OS? Not a huge consideration currently. Um, Mac OS is a little tricky um, in that it's basically all of the diagnostic and call code and logging stuff is all Windows based already for the automotive world. Um, so it's kind of a secondary consideration. It is some, it is on our radar, but I don't have a I don't have a good ETA. So. I mean, you can buy a Windows laptop. That's for the other thing is the cost of two hundred yeah. bucks. Yeah. So. It's it well, and most of the Macs you can just do a dual boot into a Windows yeah. operating system anyway. It's not it's not like you're limited <clears throat> really in that regard. So currently, I don't have any any um, any ETA on a Mac OS version. Yeah, I love I have a MacBook Pro. I love it. I really have zero desire to take it in car though. If I keep it in my <laughs> well, a... but I have like five Windows laptops to do. Car stuff, speaker stuff, all you know. I do that all on Windows, not because they're so cheap and easy to come by. Yeah, <clears throat> it's one of the one of those you know, one of a tool to add to your toolkit, basically for for most automotive things. Headers versus test pipes for the B eight S four. Um, you know this this has been um, a topic. This is not a new topic. It's been around for a long time. Uh, so, some company came out with headers a long time ago. We have installed those here at least once that I can think of. Oh no, we've done uh, we've done a handful several of them, times, yeah. and we've dynoed back to back, and we've never seen a, an improvement or a difference over a test pipe. I, I really don't personally. I don't recommend it uh, unless you just want to spend the money and you think they look cool. We haven't seen the performance to back it up. I think the fastest cars. In the world are basically running test pipes. Yep, they are. Um, so the factory manifolds are actually really nice. There's nothing wrong with them. Um, making, yeah, and, and making it, them out of a long piece of tubing, that, you know, doesn't necessarily improve anything. Yeah, and the benefits of a header, like or like equal length tuned exhaust, really kind of almost go out the window with a supercharged setup or any forced induction setup. Yeah. You're you're not relying nearly as much on the pulse harmonics or. Scavenging you're not, you're not relying on that hard, you know, hardly at so, all. So, yeah. you know, in a, in a normally aspirated car with no turbocharger, no supercharger, you're relying on just, you know, basically the velocity and the momentum of that air moving in and out of the motor uh, to, to help fill the cylinder. And with a well-tuned or, or, you know, properly tuned uh, header, you can, you can increase that by basically pulling more air through, um, through on each stroke by, you know, more effectively emptying the cylinder or actually creating a slight negative on the exhaust port. Um, but that doesn't really work, or it doesn't happen in the supercharged stuff because you're cramming so much yeah. down the tube. What, what's that shooting method 
But when you, when you, you know, it called bump shooting or oh, something. I just saw another meme come up. <laughs> oh, uh, the the bump stocks. Yeah. So, so there's there's this. I, I mean, I'm just trying to make an analogy, but there's a there's a shooting technique. I don't I don't know a lot about guns. Um, but basically, you pull the trigger, and as you pull the trigger, the the recoil gets you back into the next shot, and you can shoot even faster. I think the the Las Vegas shooter use that technique or there's a there's a certain type of i'm sure someone will wax philosophically about this in the comments but basically what nate's talking about is is paramount in a normally aspirated motor to make the most power so when, when you have combustion you have this explosion inside the cylinder which creates a lot of pressure and forces the piston back down which ultimately turns the crankshaft and everything goes but when the exhaust valve opens you get this wave of pressure pulse that goes through the header and down into the exhaust. And if you can uh, tune the header or manifold right, then you will get a wave of pressure that goes through. And behind that wave of pressure is a wave of vacuum or low pressure. And if you do it right, as one pulse exits into the collector, there's, there's vacuum in the collector as the next pressure pulse comes in. And so you, you create this, this scavenging effect where uh, exhaust is actually pulled out of the motor when you, when you time everything correctly and in order to do that you need you need it and you, you maybe heard the tune like the term tuned equal length header that's what that's referring to um, it's kind of the same as as if you're hitting a punching bag you know one hit comes right as the bag is coming back and so when you get that right it's it's amazing right and that's it's the same thing with an so um, in a turbocharged or supercharged application, that effect is so small compared to the air being just rammed into the engine that, you know, what, what we've seen is that the effect, uh, and I'm not even sure if this, there's one header on the market. I'm not even sure if it's actually been tuned correctly. Yet. Yeah, I have no it's, idea. It's, it's, it's really tough to properly it tune be with, a good implementation with, with the concept. space available on these cars. So there's no space. It's much yeah. more of a space constraint exercise than it is properly tuning. But if or you have like, like a, an LS, you know, an LS normally aspirated V8 or something or any kind of normally aspirated engine, um, then, you know, you could really benefit from this. I'm, yeah, I'm sorry and it's, if that's you because right. it's not much to work with. It's yeah, nothing like it's, just these giving days, another pound of boost. Yeah, and these days it's so much trickier with all the variable cams, which also yeah. kind of make up for all that as well. It's, it's, it's really tricky to, to just quantify, you know, single statement say headers are better than test. Yeah. It's, it's, there's a lot more that goes behind it. So again, you know, we're, 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 we're about doing what works and we really don't think that there's, there's a, a benefit to doing it. So. Um, someone is asking, how often do you check your emails? Uh, well, Monday through Friday during business hours, continually, constantly, we have like four people full time. Uh, actually, they've been working a lot of overtime this year, answering these emails. So I think we're, the last few weeks, we've been at like a two to three day response time. There, there was a few times where we've gone above that. Um, I think if you email us through like contact or tech support, or any of those, you should be getting a response within two business days. Unfortunately, if you email us on a Friday, the end of the day, that means you probably won't get a response until like Tuesday or Wednesday, which may seem like, you know, four or five days to you. But I mean, we, we, 034 Motorsport is a company that employs people. The people that work here have jobs. Um, you know, we can't ask them to work all weekend and, you know, you wouldn't want to work all weekend either. So, um, or <laughs> more, you know, a lot more than, than you've committed to, to working. So we, we're doing our best, but, um, I think, I think our times are down considerably. So thank, thank you guys for your patience this year. Is the ECU smart enough to tune itself for methanol? <laughs> well, these, these factory ECUs do not tune themselves. Yes. Yeah, that's it's, it's something a lot of people put a little more weight in than, than it's really there is, is waiting for things to adapt and waiting for yeah. things to, to settle in. The, um, the ECU is not going to tune itself for any meth. Uh, you know, there, there's going to be some fuel trims here and there that might be altered based on the meth and when it gets injected, but there's not really going to be a, you know, this, this 
fundamental change in the performance or the timing map ECU by any means. The, the ECU has a, a, a specified range that it can work in and adapt to. It's a very small controlled range. Yep. Um, I, th I think a lot of people use this uh, this concept on and on their relationships, where they're either friends with someone or they're dating or married to someone, and that person doesn't ex doesn't accept the way they act, and so they just keep acting that way, hoping that the person will adapt. <laughs> And eventually that they will, and, and of course they don't, and usually don't, don't go anywhere. So the ECU wants to be treated a certain way, and if you go too far outside of that, it's not going to change just because you want it to. Right. It's going to break up with you. But never talk to you again and block you on. Yeah, on these cars, you're going to have you know, maybe a little bit of, of fuel trim adaption, but outside of that, not really yeah. anything. It's going to react to you know, the, the air temperature sensor that can get affected by the methanol, but that's not going to tune or self-learn or do anything. Like I, think, I think trim is a better term to, yeah. to use yeah. what, uh, what the ECU is actually doing. It can trim a little bit, but trim is not, is not and it's self-tuning. It's not generally going to be anything you know, really performance-related. It's just trying to get closer to being able to hit its fuel target yeah. it's, that it's already trying to hit and already hitting anyway. Any plans to make a high pressure fuel fuel pump for the B8S4? Um, yes. So uh, we currently use the Autotech high pressure fuel pump. We are working on something higher flowing than that. I think it's a little too early to say a lot about that. But um, I think in 2021, we hope to bring something to market that mm -hmm. will allow substantially more high pressure fuel pump flow than the market has seen up till now. Yeah, hang in there. Uh, I think there's, we're not done with the B8S4 3.0T yet. There's, there's some more exciting modifications that we're working on. We're, we're finding it's a good market and you guys are still modifying them and looking to go faster. I think we'd love to see nines in these cars. There, there's, there is some more things we can do, even on the stock supercharger to get more. Yeah. Would, would you recommend a dual pulley or just larger crank pulley for the B8S4 upgrade? I mean, this is, this is entirely dependent on what you're trying to accomplish or, you know, if you're starting with a bone stock car, it's really kind of up to you. Um, you can run a large enough pulley where you can effectively hit the dual pulley ratio. Uh, that most guys run. Um, we, don't, we don't offer, you know, 190 is the biggest. Yeah, so. there, there's some trimming and some other considerations most people have to do. Um, a couple of bosses around the crank pulley area, so if there's a little bit of additional or different work you may have to consider when, when going to a pulley that large, but it really doesn't matter performance-wise. They're, they're going to achieve the same function. Yeah, once the, the larger ratios. pulleys, you can get a you know, sometimes get away with a little less belt slip issue. But pretty much all difference on top pulley. Yeah, I mean, we, we offer a, a staged, progressive way to upgrade. Um, and so if you, if you have our 190 and, and our smaller upper supercharger pulley, you could always you know, upgrade in steps. With, the, with the, a pulley that big, you're, you're stuck with the maximum possible. You know, you're not going to be able to slow the supercharger down any other way. So... Yeah, but as Nate said, as long as the supercharger is spinning the, the target speed, it doesn't matter how you get there. Does stage one tune typically come with E85 tune? I'm assuming for, uh, for B8. If this is B8S4, it's not E85, it's an E40 blend, um, where, you, where you're required to mix a little bit of uh, 91 or 93 with your E85, uh, just because of fuel system limits. Um, yes, those are all starting to roll out with uh, stage one and What's the next platform you're excited to dive into? Um, I mean, I think the, the most obvious one is Mark 8. That, that is coming online. Um, there's definitely excitement for us in jumping, diving into different tuning platforms like the MG1 series of ECUs. Yep. Um, you know, we, we're committed to making some good progress in 2021 on MG1, B9, S4, RS5, C8, RS6. 
these are all applications that, that we want to get into. And I'm very excited about uh, opening up MG1 and getting into hybrid turbo options and things like that, because <clears throat> I've been driving a B9S4 for three years and, you know, it's, it's been at stock power for, for a lot of that. Yeah. Um, and it's just exciting to think that that's such a capable platform and chassis from a handling uh, standpoint. It's really exciting to think, you know, what that car would feel like with, you know, 500, 600 mm -hmm. crank horsepower. Uh, it'll, it would be a ride. So, you know, we're, we're excited about, about all those. Um, there's, there's some other stuff I don't know talk about too much but uh i'd say between mg1 and golf 8 which is also yep uh, you know we're very excited to, to tackle those so i guess mg1 is exciting it's, it's yeah really, i mean it's, it's really exciting. in our world at least it's kind of the next big uh movement and kind of platform we're going to be working. yeah uh how are we doing on time we got minutes. eight minutes yeah um recommended big break kit for b8s4 i don't know you know, we used to list all the Brembo products on our site. We are big fans of Brembo. We use them on our in-house cars whenever we can. So we would wholeheartedly recommend any uh, you know, big brake kit for Brembo from Brembo as long as it had a bigger, thicker rotor and an upgraded caliper, uh, specifically a rotor that can, a vented rotor that can move air through it. Um, yeah, it's tough to answer because that really depends on your what you what you're doing with the car. Yeah, um, if you're doing heavy road course stuff, uh, can't get a big enough break in there. Regardless, it's tough. <clears throat> but you know, generally speaking, AP Racing, Alcon. Uh, yep, I think I think are great options. Yeah. And there's 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 OEM stuff you can you can work your way up to if you just need a small upgrade. There's guys running you know, two five rotors on up through to the R8 stuff. So. Yeah, those all uh, those, they're, they're, know, those they're, factory they're, rotors they're are very, always they're very work uh, on the road course. That's, no, no, they're, they're, that's why I'm trying to qualify that. If that's you're on the street, marginal. honestly, though, if you're on the street, you don't really need a whole lot more. You can get away with a lot on with good. You can pads. get away with a lot, but on track, it's we 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 tried to come out with like a a kit that optimized the factory braking, and there's just there's nothing that you can do with the stock brakes. Uh, I don't care what kind of fluid lines or pads you use. It just overheats after a couple laps. So, but yeah, check out Brembo and Alcon and AP. They're all great options. And I'm sure there are others. There's lots of good brake kits on the market, but some of the big brake options are more for looks or, or street driving. People have had good, good luck with, you know, Stop Tech as well if you're looking for it. Aftermarket provider. Yeah. Um, do you plan to develop 034 in the worldwide market? Um, well, you know, with, with our partnership with Racing Line, that's a big step in that direction. Racing Line will, will be helping 034 get more established worldwide, specifically uh, you know, with, a, with a hub where we can inventory product there. Um, you know, from a logistics standpoint, so not, so all our products aren't shipping from the U.S. But um, yeah, with 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 access to more world uh, applications that that are seen in the U.K. and in Europe, uh, we can we can we have access to that engine data more readily than we ever have before. So wherever there's opportunities that make sense, we will we will pursue that. But we definitely want to make zero three four products easier to acquire internationally and uh, we're we're also looking to use our engineering resources and capabilities for the world market as well uh, i'm not sure this will the flashing software work on the microsoft surface device oh okay yeah that um it depends which which surface you have some of the new ones have an arm processor which it will not work on um, all of the older ones it will as long as it's a intel based Surface, you're good. <clears throat> New products for the 4.0T. Definitely tuning. Something we'll be working on next year. We're looking into some, some various power adder products, just like we would for any application. Intake, exhaust, turbocharger upgrades. Yep. 
nothing worth saying too much about to generate too many when will it be done questions. Right. But, we have we have quite a portfolio yeah. in, in store for it. But um, you know, keep, keep an eye on 034 for 2021 on 4.0 T. Definitely, yep. definitely something we want to do. Um Uh, there's some leftover questions. Anything new? Uh, someone asked, any chance of dipping into the Porsche market? It's definitely an option for us. The, the Porsche market is smaller, and uh, there are some very well-established brands already serving the Porsche market. Um, so it's not our first choice. Uh, we've... We, we, we had a 996 about eight years ago that we worked on bringing some 996 products to market, but they never really, they never really took off. So, yeah, it's a whole nother, you know, effort and, and you know, from a, more than just a product development. It's also just getting, you know, the, the brand recognition in those markets. Yeah. You know, we, we can, we can put the effort into a, to a, an Audi product or a Volkswagen product and it's, there's a market waiting for it. We don't have to convince the first person to buy it. Right. So it's, it's just very tempting and easy for us to continue with. I think any other company in our position would be similar. So we are, we are moving more into BMW. That's something we're working on now. We do offer some BMW products currently. And in 2021, we have a plan to bring full line of BMW products to market. So that, that's our, our current lateral move into another market is BMW. Um, um, what BMW products are coming? So, you know, just think of our Dynamic Plus catalog, springs, possibly shocks, struts, sway bars, end links, uh, inserts. Th those, those are kind of the core 034 suspension products, adjustable control arms and links camber, caster products, um, things like that. Yeah, so you see a lot of the driveline stuff, the hard parts coming, coming down the pipeline first. Yeah. If, if you're a BMW enthusiast or you're watching this and you have an opinion, uh, you know, let us know what car and what products you'd be looking for. Uh, we're, we're pretty much looking between E9X and F, F3 slash F8X applications currently uh, those seem like you know the best most primed for the types of products that 034 motorsport makes so um uh, benefits of stage two over stage one no car is listed but Typically, stage two equals more power. If you want more power than stage one, then stage two is where you go. That, that could either mean getting rid of the cat or not. Um, get rid of the cat, that's uh, for racing use only. But uh, the B8 application, stage two, uh, is, is, is offered with the cat. Because, yeah, it's just a pulley ratio change. Yeah, it's just spinning the supercharger harder. And frankly, the, the, the factory cats on the B8 are not that bad you can make a lot of power with it. and and you're 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 not removing the the main emissions device from the car so on the b8 we we typically like um you know unless you're racing we typically like to keep the, the stock cats and give you the most power that way i think we're pretty much out of time this yep. week yep i think we're wrapping up so thanks again for joining us thanks for all the questions and um, thanks for hearing us out. So we will see you next week for 27. Cheers.